In competitive games, the players usually like to compare themselves with others based on score or ranks. With leaderboards, it will take you just a couple of minutes to set it all up, so players can then see how successful they were at a game level or all time. The great thing about leaderboards is that you can use it on its own, so you don't need to have any of the other Unity services, so you can just start with a blank project. First, we need to check that our project is connected with a Unity ID, so we can go to Edit, Project Settings, Services, and just see if you have linked to your Unity project with a ID, if you haven't, you can just click a button to link it. Then we can go to the Package Manager, hit the plus icon and add package by name. And write com.unity.services.leaderboards. Once you have the package installed, as with all of the other Unity services, we'll need to go to the Unity Cloud, so open your internet browser and search for Unity Cloud. Open cloud.unity.com and sign in. Select the project where you want to use leaderboards, go to the product section, and as you scroll down, in the community section, you can find the leaderboards, so we can just launch it. And there is just one simple step that we need to make, which is to create the leaderboard, so you can just press this button, give it some name and ID, here we can select which sort order we want to use, so if you have a game where you have some score, you probably want to sort it from the highest to the lowest, but if you want to compare the players based on time, then we can select the lowest to highest. Then we can select the update strategy, so if you want to show the best score, the latest score or the total score, so in my case I will just show the total score. Then we can create some buckets which will allow us to pretty much split players into smaller groups, this would allow you to create some kind of league system, because if your game is being played by 10,000s of users, then you don't want to be comparing with all of them, so instead you can create those buckets, where in one bucket there can be let's say 100 users. We also have an option to schedule some resets of the leaderboards, which would allow us to let's say every month just clean all of the leaderboards, so players can start from zero score, but I don't really need it, so we can just hit next. We can also add some tiers, which is quite useful, such as bronze tier, gold tier, so on, so I will hit S, and you can just define those tiers. So I have those three tiers, I have also defined the score at which the tier is starting, and we can hit finish. And that's all for the setup, so we can go back to Unity and create some leaderboards manager. I have the leaderboards manager script on an empty object, and I've also added a simple UI where we have just some scroll rect, and under the content parent, I can just add those leaderboards items that I have created and it should easily show me as many of them as I want. So each of the leaderboards items will be showing me the player name, the score and I will also have an image for the tier that the player has. And the way that I set up all of these items is really simple, to the content parent I have just added a vertical layout group. First, let's take a look at how we can show a list of all of the players and their scores. In the leaderboards manager, I have added few variables, the first one is for the player script, where we will just be able to access the player score, we also have a variable for the leaderboard parent, so that we can just turn it on and off, then we have the leaderboard content parent, where we will be instantiating all of these leaderboard item prefabs, and this step is optional, this is just for defining the sprites for the different tiers. And then the important thing is to also have a variable for the ID of your leaderboard. And make sure that you have inputted the actual ID and not the name, you can just see this back in the Unity Cloud. So here you have the name and here is the ID. And in the update function I'm just simply turning the leaderboard on and off. So I'm checking if you are pressing the escape, if we are, then I'm setting it to inactive or active. One crucial thing that we need to do before we start using the leaderboards is to initialize the Unity services, so I'm doing this in the start function. And to use the Unity Services class, I had to add unity.services.core. Then you should also sign in, so either you can sign in anonymously or using Google, Facebook and stuff like that. But in my case, I'm not signing in in this script, because I'm already doing this in the lobby manager. So if you don't have the lobby manager, you can just sign in here. And to use the authentication service, you would need to add using unityservices.authentication. I've created one new function, update leaderboard, and this one should be running pretty much all the time when we actually want to update the leaderboard, so I'm making this one run just two times per second. So if we are playing the application and we actually have opened the leaderboard, this function will be running because I'm starting it in the update function when we actually open the leaderboard. To make sure that we can wait those 500 milliseconds, I have just added using system.threading.tasks. But before we start showing all of these scores to the player, we should make sure that the player has a record in the leaderboards, otherwise it would give us an error. So on start, we will be just adding zero score to the user, 
to make sure that he has a record in the leaderboards. Pretty much all of the functions that we'll need are inside the leaderboard service class, for which we need the unity that services that leaderboard's namespace. Then we can access the instance because again it is a singleton and we have just a few simple functions. And the first one is the add player score async, which we need just now. In the function we can define the leaderboard's ID, which we have here, and then the score which on start I'm just setting to zero. And we also have some options that we can input, but this doesn't really contain any useful information for us. Now we can get back to the update leaderboard function, where again inside the leaderboard service we can use the function get scores async, which will get us all these scores from a leaderboard. This one is returning us a leaderboard score page, so just save it into a variable. And to use this type, we need to add unity.services.leaderboards.models. After we have the leaderboard score page, which is containing all of the scores and the users, then we can just run through all of the children of the leaderboard content parent to just destroy all of the leaderboard items that we have in the list. And then I'm going through all of the leaderboard entries, which are stored inside the leaderboard score page in the results list. And from the entry, we can get a bunch of useful information, such as the player ID, the player name, the rank, score, and the tier. So we can then instantiate these leaderboard's items and set the text for the player name and the score. And lastly, we can set the correct sprite for the tier image. So I'm checking for the entry that's tier. If it is the bronze tier, I'm setting the tier sprite to the bronze tier sprite and so on. And then I'm just changing the image to the correct tier sprite. And you will again find all of these names for the tiers that you have defined back in the Unity Cloud. So here you can see all of the names for the tiers that I have defined. So we are in the game and when I press escape, yep, I can see just some random name and the score that I have and also the tier. I've also created a build of the game. So when I press escape, yep, I can see those two users where one of them is the editor and second one is the build. Let's just quickly fix the naming so that when we actually create the profile using the lobby, we are setting the correct name to the user. So I will be doing this in the lobby manager, but really you can do it wherever you are creating the profile. So in my case, this is the function to create the profile. So we can just access the authentication service, get the instance and use the function to update the player name async. So now I can create my own profile, give it some name, then just set up the lobby. So we are in the game, press escape and yep, I can see my name freedom coding. And lastly, we will take a look at how we can add some score to the player, which we have pretty much already done in the start function, when we are just adding zero score to the player. So when I kill some enemies, I will increase the score in game, and when we go into the leaderboard, it is going to transfer this score into the leaderboard. In the leaderboards manager, we already have a variable for the player script, so I will just set it in the player. So in the start function of the player, I am just finding the leaderboards manager and setting the player script to this. And then all we need to do in the leaderboards manager is just call the add player score function when we need it and just assign the score that we want to add to the leaderboard. I would also suggest you to wrap it inside a try and catch, so if something goes wrong you at least get some information about what actually went wrong. And to get more information out of it, you can use the leaderboards exception for which you need to add unity.services.leaderboards.exceptions. So when anything goes wrong, we should know what it is. So now again I'm playing the game in the build as well as in the editor. So in the build we can try killing some enemies, which should increase our score. And now if I press escape to go into the leaderboard, yep, I can see Freedom Coding and Mark. Freedom Coding is in this case me in the build, and we can see that I have gained 5 score. In the same way if I go back to the editor, I press escape, yep, I can see that the score has updated. And that's all for the leaderboards. You can see that the setup was really simple and it is still quite useful service. There are still quite a few multiplayer topics that I would like to cover, but I'm not really sure how much interested you would be in them. So in case that you are interested in a particular multiplayer topic, just let me know down in the comments. Feel free to join our Discord server which is a great community of game developers and take a look at my Patreon. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Paul Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.